Good day to all. Welcome to Extreme Recap. The show starts with a scene in a secondary school break room where a fair young person named Taylor is by and large obnoxiously gone after by her cohorts who call her disparaging names. The Hedger chief proclaims that Taylor is presently not wanted at their table, inciting her to look for comfort at a practically vacant table where April, a nearly fat cohort, is sitting. April attempts to comfort Taylor, yet the last option answers by becoming suddenly angry and offending her appearance prior to stomping off the following day in the washroom. Taylor is crying and fixing her cosmetics when April moves toward her from behind. Unfortunate, Taylor apologizes for her past comments. Be that as it may, April blanket prompting an actual quarrel. April fiercely goes after Taylor, crushing her face into a mirror, hitting her head on the sink and at last suffocating her in a latrine. All through the attack, a dark tear trickles from April's eye, recommending something heavenly is at play. A while later, April ends up in a psychological ward where she trusts in our hero, Sam Winchester, who is bailed as a legal counselor. Taylor communicates disappointment that nobody trusts her, in spite of coming clean. Yet, Sam guarantees her that he's there to help and urges her to share everything about the episode. However reluctant, Taylor uncovers that she felt had during the assault, mindful of her activities, yet incapable to control them. At the point when Sam gets some information about any surprising scents like sulfur or dark smoke during the belonging, April excuses the inquiry. Taking into account ludicrous. Later in the vehicle, Sam gives his sibling dignitary a point-by-point -point update about April's circumstance. He proposes that April might have been moved by a devil, despite the fact that they haven't noticed the regular signs like dark smoke and sulfur. He then, at that point, recommends they go to the school and examine the matter. Dignitary at first opposes prodding Sam about their previous encounters at Truman High, the school they momentarily joined in. He scrutinized Sam's thought process in needing to return there, however in the long run consents to examine after Sam persuades him. The story then streaks back to 1997 when Sam is a bashful green bean and senior member is the cool person in a calfskin coat. Sam has a baffled outlook on oftentimes changing schools and abandoning companions. What's more, Hearing this, senior member consoles him that once their dad returns, they will settle down and carry on with a blissful existence. Then, Sam enters the homeroom and puts on a show of being inconsiderate and egotistical while finding his seat, he inadvertently drops a butterfly blade which grabs the eye of a geeky understudy named Barry. Barry is intrigued by Sim's speedy reflexes and presents himself. Notwithstanding, inconvenience emerges when a bigger understudy named Dirk begins torturing Barry by flicking his ear. Seeing this, Sam steps in and immovably advises Dirk to quit, astonishing him with his emphaticness. Presently back to the current day, senior member puts on an entertaining camouflage, wearing tight shorts, knee-high socks and a red headband. He becomes Mentor Ron, a substitute exercise center educator with a particular character at Truman Secondary School. Dignitary then presents Evade Bow as the round of the day, announcing it as one of the best games at any point concocted. Amidst a turbulent dodgeball game, Sam enters and illuminates Dignitary that there are no indications of wicked action or weird substances in the school. Following this, Sam recognizes his prior botch and proposes they leave after lunch. The scene then moves to a lab where a geeky understudy is focused on a food processor. Unexpectedly, when his colleague derides him, the geek lets completely go and embeds the domineering jerk's wrist into the processor, bringing about a grim injury and blood splattering. In any case, quickly a short time later, the geeky understudy breakdowns and a dim fluid seepages from his ears. Sam shows up at the scene and perceives this as an obvious sign of devilish presence in the school. A short time later, Sam really looks at the school storage spaces for any indications of powerful action and examines what is happening with senior member. They track down no signs of the extraordinary in the school. However, reach the determination that a phantom has had the geeky kid senior member investigates the school records. And keeping in mind that it might appear to be irrelevant, he additionally tracks down data about the legitimate status of team promoters in those records. They found that an understudy named Barry Cook committed suicide in 1998 in a similar washroom where another understudy, Taylor, died. It appears to be that Barry's strategy for activity includes utilizing geeky kids as vessels to get back at menaces. 
Dignitary inquires as to whether this lines up with Barry's common way of behaving and Sam answers with a feeling of bitterness, expressing that Barry had a troublesome life and he knows him by and by. In a flashback to 1997, Barry is strolling down the foyer when a harasser deliberately wrecks him. Seeing this, Sam shows up to his guide, assisting him with getting his. As they talk, Barry gets over the occurrence, sharing his arrangement to concentrate on veterinary medication at Michigan State since he accepts creatures are kinder than individuals. In the meantime, Dignitary is in the storage space kissing a young lady named Amanda Heckerling, who is notable in the school. Dignitary recommends going out on the town to watch the film. I spit on your grave at 12 p.m., however Amanda declines. She makes sense of that she has a severe time limit of 11 o'clock and breaking it would bring about lengthy establishing by her folks. At the point when she gets some information about his check-in time, he uncovers that he doesn't have one since their dad is away. What's more, he and Sam are remaining at a neighborhood inn partaking in their opportunity. Inquisitive, Amanda inquires as to whether he misses their dad, yet senior member stays calm. Continuing on, when Sam and Barry are strolling in the lobby, their discussion is intruded on by Dirk, the domineering jerk who stands up to Barry once more. Sam advises Barry to leave and won't take part in a battle in spite of Dirk inciting him. Barry then rapidly goes to find an instructor for help as Sam attempts to leave, Dirk gets his shoulder, turns him around and punches him. Sam's face loads up with outrage. However, before he can fight back, an educator steps in and stops the battle. In the current day, Sam and senior member find Barry's grave and play out the important custom to put his soul to. They bid him goodbye and leave the area subsequent to consuming his bones. During their drive, Sam thinks about his past fellowship with Barry and contemplates whether he might have made a difference. Dignitary helps him to remember the difficulties Barry confronted, including his folks, separate from battles at school, and dependents taking drugs. He additionally guaranteed Sam that it wasn't his shortcoming and communicated his alleviation at abandoning that town and school. Back in 1997, Dignitary faces Sam about the episode, with Dirk communicating his longing to look for retribution. In any case, Sam declares that he didn't require senior members' assistance and makes sense of that he ceased from retaliating on the grounds that he needed to be viewed as an ordinary understudy. Hearing this senior. Member questions Sam's view inquiring as to whether getting through a beating is viewed as ordinary. Sam tries not to reply and moves the discussion to their dad, inquiring as to whether they have gotten any report from him. Senior member illuminates them that their dad's work will expect basically one more week. Sam attempts to comfort senior member by referencing his relationship with Amanda, yet Dignitary uncovers that she believes him should meet her folks, which makes him agreeable. Afterward, after the class is finished, Sam's instructor, Mr. Wyatt, requests that he stay to examine an exposition task. Mr. Wyatt addressed Sam's decision of a genuine point as Sam had expounded on killing a werewolf the past summer. Sam expects that he could get a faltering grade, yet shockingly, Mr. Wyatt gives him an and acclaims his composing abilities. He then recommends that Sam consider chasing after a composing vocation, yet Sam makes sense of that he feels committed to follow. This prompts Mr. Wyatt to inquire as to whether he really needs to join the privately run company. Furthermore, the last option answers that nobody has at any point posed him that inquiry. In the current day, Sam recalls his effective discussion with Mr. Wyatt, who shared his own excursion from a hopeful specialist too. Roused by this, Sam requests that senior member return him to Truman Secondary School so he can converse with Mr. Wyatt later. While strolling down the passage, Sam is moved toward by a young lady looking for bearings. He helps her, however amazingly, she unexpectedly wounds him in the chest. The young lady uncovers herself as a had individual, yet Sam retaliates utilizing salt to remove the phantom from her. In the following scene, senior member offers Sam some bourbon as they talk about their arrangement to manage the apparition. Sam is baffled that the phantom knew his name, taking into account that they currently consumed Barry's bones. In the interim, senior member analyzes the records and understands that every one of the three casualties rode a similar transport. They conclude that the phantom should be attached to the transport as spirits generally torment the spots they're associated with. Then, they research the transport and find electromagnetic field MF readings demonstrating a heavenly presence. Since no passings happened on the transport, 
they comprehend they need to reveal what connects the soul to it. In the interim, Dignitary look through the driver's compartment and finds another transport grant having a place with Dirk McGregor, Sr., the dad of the harasser Dirk. In a flashback to 1997, Dirk trips Barry as they head to the transport. Sam mediates, yet Dirk pushes him to the ground and insults him. Having had enough, Sam at last retaliates, capably evading Dirk's punches and conveying a strong beat down. Using the abilities he obtained from his evil presence hunting father, Sam arises successful and gives Dirk the epithet Dirk the Jerk. Everybody starts reciting the moniker and Dirk takes off from that point. In the current day, Sam and Dignitary visit Dirk Sr.'s home to accumulate data about his child. They discovered that Dirk Jr. died at 18 because of substance misuse. Dirk Sr. communicates lament over his failure to help his child and uncovers the difficulties Dirk looked at school. Counting harassing and being called Dirk the jerk in his battle because of the absence of. Then, Sam is overpowered with culpability after finding out about Dirk's troublesome past, including really focusing on his mom as she experienced malignant growth. Dirk's dad makes sense of that seeing his mom's sluggish decay significantly affected Dirk powering his displeasure. Out of nowhere, senior member rapidly gets some information about Dirk's. Entombment area. However the dad uncovers that Dirk was incinerated. Notwithstanding, he likewise uncovers that he kept a lock of Dirk's hair in his book of scriptures, which is inside the school transport. The scene then, at that point, movements to the transport, which is right now shipping a group with Eddie, the substitute transport driver who was giving indications of being moved by. Eddie drives carelessly, causing worry among the mentor. Luckily, Sam and Dignitary are good to go to mediate. They attack the street compelling Eddie to crash and stop. They then, at that point, immediately control Eddie, who is moved by Dirk with a rope absorbed salt water. Utilizing this open door, Dignitary enters the transport looking for the holy book, yet neglects to track down it. In the interim, Sam stands up to Eddie, who goes on a speech about the harassing he persevered and his longing for vengeance against the domineering jerk and hearing this, Sam attests that neither of them were genuinely detestable, however casualties of dread and wretchedness caught in the troublesome climate of secondary school. He communicates regret that Dirk and Barry didn't get to encounter life past those upset times. In an extraordinary second, the had Eddie breaks liberated from his limitations, provoking Consider to shoot him with assault ground. Dirk's soul then, at that point, leaves at his body and has the most grounded colleague who assaults Sam. Right then, at that point, Senior member look through Whirlpool's body and finds the lock of Dirk's hair, which he touches off with his Zippo lighter. As the hair consumes, Dirk's soul is delivered, going to debris in the breeze. The had colleague then, at that point, falls on top of Sam. Back in 1997, Amanda gets senior member with one more young lady in the storage space. Amanda isn't furious yet disheartened as she specifies that she had expected to see additional profundity and responsiveness from senior member past his cool veneer. Dignitary attempts to guard himself by professing to be a legend who recovers lives. But, Amanda sees through his demonstration and calls him a miserable and desolate youngster prior to leaving. In the meantime, Sam gets acclaim and esteem for facing Dirk, acquiring prevalence among his friends. Right then their dad calls senior member showing that now is the ideal time to leave. Burning through no time, senior member hustles to the vehicle, asking Sam to go along with him. As Sam gazes toward a study hall window, he sees Barry watching him with a miserable articulation. Sam says farewell, gets into the vehicle and they drive off, abandoning the obscure destiny of Barry. In the current day, Sam satisfies his arrangement to visit Mr. Wyatt, who remembers him with just the right amount of update. Sam offers thanks for the counsel Mr. Wyatt gave him, empowering him to settle on his own decisions as opposed to indiscriminately following the privately run company. Sam uncovers that he set off for college in light of Mr. Wyatt's impact, yet concedes that as one becomes older, obligations become more. Mr. Wyatt underscores that Sam's satisfaction is overwhelmingly significant. The episode closes with Sam understanding that he doesn't have an unmistakable response to whether he is genuinely content with his. Turn on notifications, please subscribe for more videos like this, and like the channel to support it. Thank you very much for watching.